Howdy, howdy. <laughs> I am so excited to be back in Austin after nearly a decade. Um, so my agenda is just stuffing myself with lots of breakfast tacos. Uh, a little bit about myself, I am Manju Vijay Kumar. I'm a software engineering lead at Salesforce. Um, like Mary mentioned, I work on voice assistance for Salesforce. So basically think um, like Alexa, but for business users. Okay, so the next 10 minutes, I am going to focus uh, on giving you a taste of functional programming. Uh, we're going to look at code examples that use loops, and then we're going to try to refactor that using functions. So. Uh, let's define what a function is. Uh, I like to think of it just in the mathematical sense, right? It's just a unit that takes an input x and gives you an output y. So in that essence, a function is just your data flowing in and your data flowing out. So you can visualize that you could put functions together, right? Uh, you could compose functions. So basically, you could take the output of function f and then feed it as input to function g. That helps us define what functional programming truly is. So functional programming for me is just data transformed through a set of functions. Now, functional programming seems very scary with all of the jargon out there, right? Like we hear about purity, immutability, currying, and so on and so forth. But for me, I just follow one guiding principle for functional programming. And almost every other concept in functional programming is a derivation of this guiding principle which is avoiding side effects. So let's see an example of what exactly a side effect means. All right, so uh, we have function here increment, uh, pretty simple. It basically, every time you call this function, it's going to increment your total by one. All right, so we call it first time, it's one, and the second time it's two. Oh no, what just happened? Was it supposed to be two? Uh, there you go, right? Like, I, I was expecting total to be uh, two at this point because I imagine it's only one, but in programming, it's crazy, right? Like, there, is, there are multiple threads. Some, some client just called this function already, so my total has changed to uh, two already. And that is because this function is doing something that you don't expect. It's trying to change state of this variable, which is outside the function. So this is what creates a side effect. Whenever you have a function that's trying to change the state of a variable or an object or writing to a database, what have you, outside the function, it creates a side effect. So in functional programming, this is not a pure function. So let's go ahead and fix that side effect. A simple way to do that is going back to our definition of a function, right? Uh, your function takes an input always and always returns an output. That way, no matter how many times you call this, you're always guaranteed to get the same output. And there you go, it's a pure function. All right, so now that we know what side effects are and how we can fix that using pure functions, let's get to business with building a breakfast taco. That's, that's why we're all here, right? Um, so let's imagine that we have a pantry of uh, a lot of ingredients required for your taco. So it's just an array uh, with ingredients with name and a property vegan, which says whether it's vegan or not, because you know, I'm fancying a vegan breakfast taco today, so why not? Uh, so we have a bunch of variables and our um, taco string, which will be our final taco programmatically. Uh, so we'll have a loop that loops through all of the items in your pantry. So you could imagine like, oh, we look at a potato as a pantry item, and then we have the is vegan function uh, that checks, oh, is it vegan? Okay, okay, then let, let me put that into prepare ingredient function. And the prepare ingredient function basically chops your potatoes, cooks it up, um, and then puts it in your ingredients array list. And then we go through again with a loop uh, through all the vegan-only ingredients, right? And then prepare our taco, which is our final string. So there you go. Your breakfast taco is served with potatoes, avocado, and salsa. Uh, life's good. Um, or is it? <laughs> right? Like, there are uh, clearly two side effects there. Uh, we are using ingredients as a list where we add all our ingredients. But what if somebody just went and added eggs to it, right? It wouldn't be a vegan uh, ingredient anymore, and no bueno, that's bad. Um, so we want to fix these side effects, right? And the main point here I'm trying to make is that loops by nature produce side effects. 
Because have you ever seen a loop that just iterates through a list and does nothing? Not really. So it's almost always like changing a variable value or it's trying to uh, you know, manipulate an object state based on what you're doing while you're iterating through a list. Um, and so we can replace loops with something called higher order functions. Uh, we have all heard about map, filter, reduce as, you know, as just language features or just come out of the box with your library. But these functions are uh, what we call higher order functions. And let's see how we can replace that loop code. So all of that code that we saw on a single screen can now be just replaced by you know, this neat four-liner code. Um, uh, it's readable, modular, and all that. But the key point here I'm trying to make is we have fixed the side effect. And the way we have done that is, um, let's take an example of the filter function. So filter function is a higher order function because it takes another function as an input, so in our case, is vegan, and then as it iterates through each item in the list, uh, it applies the is vegan function uh, on that item. But as it's iterating through that list and creating its own list, it, it's creating a new collection. It's not actually going and changing your pantry array or it's going and changing the state of some other variable or the ingredients list that we looked at. And then it creates this new collection and passes it on to map and then reduce. So that's how we are fixing that side effect. Now let's uh, look at how reduce function works a little bit because it's a little not, not, not so trivial, right? Um, so basically, reduce function is another higher order function. It expects a reducer function, which, um, which is basically a function that you would provide. Um, and then you can also give an optional initial value to it. So for example, I want my taco to be read as your breakfast taco, right? So I just provide that initial value. And this reducer function, in our case, the prepare taco method, um, basically has like a taco string, which is like an accumulator. And as it iterates through each item in the list, the reduce function applies this prepare taco function, and the prepare taco function is building that string for you and accumulates all that value in the taco string. And so your string is slowly building up with like served with potatoes, then avocados, and then, you know, salsa. So great, we replaced those loops with higher order functions. Um, that's amazing. But can we do better? Uh, yes, we can. Um, remember this picture that we earlier saw? Basically, you could compose functions together, right? So why not think about chaining our functions um, instead of going through all of that map, filter, and reduce? So technically, um, oh, by the way, this is all JavaScript code. I should have told that up front. So in JavaScript, uh, we can cheat a bit, right? Um, JavaScript does accept a function as an uh, argument and can also produce a function as an output. So you could technically write all of that code in a single line like this. Um, but it's not so readable, right? Like, uh, does that mean that we are preparing the taco first and then calling prepare ingredient? Not really that readable, right? It's basically trying to evaluate everything from right to left because it runs the isVegan function first. So we can make it a little better. Um, uh, imagine that you are writing a function called pipe, another higher order function. I must have told function a million times by now. <laughs> so uh, the pipe function basically um, takes a list of n functions. Here we have just three functions, but it can be like any number of functions, and like chains them together. So basically, the output of isVegan goes as input to prepare ingredient, and then to prepare taco, and so on. It's interesting to see how this pipe function could be implemented. Um, if a head is hurting, yeah, <laughs> I am with you, because it took me at least a day to really understand what this function does. And in the interest of time, I cannot explain it more. But um, here, uh, the key thing is the reduce that you see on line two. So basically, pipe is creating a new higher order function that takes an argument. Ar your argument here is a pantry array. And then it passes it to the reduce. And the reduce is trying to take that argument, pass it as input to your first function in the list. And then it applies the same thing, because it's reducing from one, two, three, four functions. And you get your output. Um, I have more explanations for this and resources at the end of the talk. Uh, but the good news is you don't really have to write this pipe function very soon, at least in JavaScript. Uh, it is um, a proposal to the TC39 community, uh, basically, where you might just have a pipeline operator. And you could just pass, you could write it as so, encode. 
Um, so that's great, uh, because this is something that you want to often do, and you, you don't want to have a lot of boilerplate code around this. So great, so loops were replaced by high order functions and com composing functions. So we can now say that we are an expert in at least pure functions. So in conclusion, functional programming is just not data transform transformed through a set of functions. But I would like to say it's data transformed through a set of pure functions. Thank you very much. Send your tacos to uh, V Manju on Twitter. And I have all my references on um, bit.ly slash end of loops. And thank you, and enjoy the conference. Well done.